G'day everyone, it's Wes Leak here from Business Blessings and I'd like to welcome you to uh, the first of a series of three interviews that I've done with Bob Bodine, who's the author of a book called Two Chairs. So this interview was done, I think it's three or four years ago, so I know it's going back a bit and it was soon after the book Two Chairs was released. And um, let, me, let me give you some background to how I came a- across Two Chairs. I was actually, I, I love listening to podcasts. Uh, I was listening to one of the Zig Ziglar podcasts with an interview with Bob. And because I have a passion in helping people to hear the voice of God for themselves, when I heard this interview with Bob, I thought, this is fantastic because there's a lot of books out there on about how to hear the voice of God, but they're more in relation to a church or ministry context and not a business or marketplace context. So I really uh, enjoyed listening uh, to that interview. Um, as usual, one of the issues I have with listening to podcasts is I get to to <laughs> buy books. <laughs> My library keeps expanding pretty much every time I listen to a podcast, which is not very good. And I'm going to encourage you to, to buy a copy of Two Chairs because you really, really should do that. Uh, so I did buy a copy of Two Chairs, and I can remember I was actually doing a radio interview the next morning and thinking, God, what am I going to speak about? And the book was sitting beside my bed, and I think my wife was away that night, and so I picked it up and I started reading it probably about 11 o'clock at night, and I finished it in the early hours of the morning, and I thought, man, this is a book that really gets to the heart of how do you hear the voice of God in business? One of the things I ask and love about it is that Bob sets a framework in place. Uh, he asks three very disruptive questions, and you'll hear him talk about these. Does God know your situation? Of course, the answer to that is yes. Is it too hard for him to handle? Of course, the answer to that is no. And does he have a good plan for you? And of course, the answer to that is yes. The question is we need to ask him. It's all about setting up two chairs, one for you, one for God, sitting down and having that conversation with him. God, what's on your heart for me today? And so you'll hear uh, some great uh, stories. Bob will talk about his other book called The Power of Who and Two Chairs, and the two books really go hand in hand. Enjoy this interview, then enjoy listening to the other two, which is a follow-up. And you know, one of the good things is, is since this interview, I've actually become good friends with Bob and him and I talk regularly and I think since then I've given away at least a thousand two chairs books um, but also the the comments and testimonies that we've had back from people who've implemented this simple strategy into their lives is just being incredible and it's why I'm so passionate about it and why I'm resharing these interviews with you. Well, it'd be great uh, to hear some feedback from you about this interview. Uh, I'd love it if you can to like and share and follow uh, the podcast and leave a review that really helps us. Uh, Is there somebody who you know would benefit from this as well? Please share it with them. Most of all, I'd love to hear your testimonies of what happens when you sit down and have your two chairs time with God. Okay, well, welcome everyone. My name's Wes Leek from Business Blessings, and we've got Bob Bodine uh, with us today. So welcome, Bob. Hey, great being with you, Wesley, and, and to everybody in Australia. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so just some practicalities while we get started. You'll see down the bottom is an opportunity to chat. Uh, so please ask questions as we go, uh, and then at different times I'll interrupt Bob and we'll get to those questions and uh get from there so this is uh, our third webinar in a series of breakthroughs to success that we're doing and one of the key things bob that i love about what you're doing is that there's very few books out there in the marketplace about how to hear god in the marketplace and so thank you so much for that but let's get started tell us your story tell us a bit about who bob bodine is yeah well i appreciate that so so I'm a businessman, and uh, I have uh, I'm in an executive recruiting business. And so executive recruiting, we you know, my dad started this industry in 1967 out of McKinsey, and that's one of the top consulting firms in the country. And uh, and so normally in, in executive recruiting, you place the top three or four spots in jobs, and you help people 
and you take them out of one role and you and you elevate them and put them into 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 bigger roles with bigger responsibility and bigger trouble and bigger problems because normally they wouldn't be calling me if they weren't in trouble. And so so I got into this business and uh, after doing it a little bit, uh, probably about ten years, uh, I I all of a sudden looked at my dad and I said, you know, I should do what I love plus what I'm really good at. And I think that's what people should. You know, when I talk to people around the country, I, I said, you should do a job you love with people you love in a place you love where your family loves it and you can do it for the right, you know, the right reason. And most people, they love the job. They hate the people, love the people, love the job. <laughs> they love the people, love the job, hate the city. And they're like, they always something wrong. And the answer is God didn't create it that way. God created it that you should go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. And and so God has a plan. And of course, that goes back to your hearing a little bit of hearing from God, obviously, in this process. And so I told my dad, I said, you know, hey, I should do something, you know, when I'm doing this. And he goes, well, what are you talking about? And I said, when I do a search for a president, like of a manufacturing company, at the end of the search, I get a tour of the plant. If I did the head of marketing for the NBA, okay, in basketball, we'd get All-Star Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and so... We, in a short period of time, you know, I, when I came out first and wrote my first book, The Power of Who, WHO, I would have called it The Power of Friendship, but, but people today have 5,000 people on Facebook are their best friends, right? Everybody's a friend. And so the problem is, is that this is really a distinct problem with men. Men over the age of 35 stop adding friends. They're friendly. They don't have new friends. And so they keep their old friends. And then the only problem is when men are over 60, they stop going back to their old friends and then they just stick with their family. And that's, that's a disaster for people across the country because in this world you have lots of change and there's lots of problems and there's lots of stuff and you and I need a mate. We need a buddy. We need somebody we can talk to. And so God has given us these people to help us through times that are really tough. And we're gonna talk about that today, but as I started to do this, we're the leading search firm now in the country, in the United States in sports and entertainment and do things in the NFL and soccer. And, you know, and we do, uh, we do, you know, things cutting across, you know, ultimate fighting championships and tennis and golf and you name it. And so God has kind of given me a great opportunity, a great platform to place people of great integrity, great character, great core values, great Christian values into the jobs and, uh, and elevate them. And so that's been a real blessing. You must have one of the most fun jobs on the planet, Bob. It is so good. You wouldn't even believe it. And so we placed basketball coaches. I placed 83 coaches. We placed 52 athletic directors out of the 100 in the United States. So you name it, we've kind of done it all. And so it's really, uh, it's really a blessing. So, Bob, what kind of team do you have doing it? Or is it all you? <laughs> there must be a team behind you. Know, there always has to be a team behind you. But, you know, it used to be where I had offices in Chicago, New York, L.A., San Francisco, and 15 countries in Europe and, and Australia. We had Sydney. We had all these places all over. And then what we decided that, hey, you know, God told us to kind of, you know, shrink in a little bit and do what you love. You know, it's important that people today – are surrounded by people who uplift them and encourage them and bring hope and joy. No matter whether you're a fireman, whether you're all of a sudden a small business owner, today, who you associate with matters. And of course, that's the crucial piece of this next book is wouldn't it be logical we associate with God? Yes, that's right. But okay, let's before we get into two chairs, let's just backtrack because some people don't know about the power of who. Oh, yeah. And I've been reading it the last couple of weeks just to, you know, in preparation for this. It, you really look at this networking thing very differently to what others do. Tell, yeah. tell us about that. Yeah. So today, uh, networking is the word people use when they're looking for something new. They're looking for their goals and their dreams and, and they're looking for opportunities, to, whether it's their mom in a hospital that they need to go to or wherever they have to go, they think of the word networking which is, of course, not working. And, and so <laughs> networking is a faceless website. It's a LinkedIn strategy. It's calling up people you don't know. How many people like to make cold calls? Yeah, that's right, none. How many people actually are going to call up someone? You're, 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 you're knocked in in an accident, and I'm going to pull out my card from, a, from some rotary club or some club that I joined and call some guy I don't know and think he's going to come out and help me when I'm in trouble. They don't. But what if? 
Each of us, Wesley, were given specific people in our lives to help us in ways we never imagined. What if those people aren't happenstance acquaintances? What if they were strategically given to you to help you find that place in life you always dreamed about? Okay, the answer is, this is about friends. God gave you specific people. If you were, you know, in this process, if you, your grandfather told you if you had one friend, you're blessed. Three, rich. Twelve, you change the world. Now, that model's been around a long time. Jesus had 12 friends, three close, one last. Everyone knows who he is. 2,000 years later, he's still signing recruits and still doing new deals. Yes. <laughs> it's a funny thing. So what I try to tell in The Power of Who is that you already know everyone you need to know. Now, that's the most amazing thing that someone could do. When you're in trouble, you're not going to start out and say, I wonder, I'm going to call some influential person over here who doesn't know me. And because and, they're not going to call me back. But what happens if your friends are actually resources and conduits to your success? And of course, we've been taught the opposite. And so we were taught that friends and business were taboo. So let me get this correct. We're supposed to work with people we don't know and don't trust. Yes. This is <laughs> something wrong here. And so in the United States, there's only 18% of corporations that even have a program that promotes friendship. So no longer standing around the, you know, the coffee and you and I say good morning and we talk and we have, no, no, get to your cubicle and get to work. So why would I want to have a friend? Because if you have one friend at your company, a true friend, someone you can talk to spiritually about things that are important in your life, about somebody who could, you know, I always tell people that friends are different than acquaintances. Friends help you now and acquaintance wishes you well. Right? I mean, a friend is someone who knows the song in your heart, and they can sing it back to you when you've forgotten the words. Friends are secret keepers. Friends do these things. 87% of all jobs are placed by one friend. Come on. You got your last job by your friend. You got the job before that by your friend. Now you're out of work. And what happens is guy works for 20 years in the same job, and now all of a sudden he doesn't know what to do, and he's forgotten how to kiss, hold hands, and ask a girl out for a date, you know, kind of like, hey, so what are we doing? And so they, they think, and so what they do is they network. Hey, hand a business card to you. Hey, good to see you, buddy. Like, get out of here. I would, hey, Wesley, Bob, we're like at a networking meeting. Why don't you put a stick into my eye? You know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is no good. But God gave you people, specifically, just like he gave Jesus. And these people are crucial, but the problem is we've been taught it's rude to ask our friends for help. But let me ask you, Wesley, if you and I are, are, are friends and I ask you for help, would you help me? Of course I would. Yes. Why would you deny me the same joy of helping you? Yes. It never right. works in reverse. And so here's yes. what's amazing. Don't let, if you have 100 friends and I have 100 friends, we don't have 200 friends. We have 10,000. Yeah. Your friends yeah. have friends. And so yes. the issue is, is that even though your friend could be a dentist, someone who came into his chair today, who's one of his friends, is a business guy who's going to yes. give a loan to one of your other people, or yes. he's going to open up a door and introduce you. And who would we not rather help than my friends? God yes. gave me friends to pass the business to you. And so we have never been given permission to talk to our friends about doing business. Now, listen. I would only do business with you, Wesley. And we pick, listen to me, I guarantee you that people who are listening right now is we could take six of us right now. We could start our own company, okay? We'd only pass our, our business around to people we know and care, like you and our friends here. And we'd be, we'd have more than enough. It's just, we're just all backwards. We're trying to do business with people we don't know, who have nothing, we weren't given them. And it's very awkward. So, Bob, I've got a key question in this area because I've noticed that the Asian churches particularly are very good about integrating business and friendship and doing that. But from the church's perspective in Australia, I, I don't know whether it's, um, you know, an Amway thing that went through back in the 60s, 70s, whatever. We've kind of segregated this business and church and, and stuff like that. What, what, would, what would you say to that? Because really... Yeah, <laughs> so wrong. And the reason is, is that we're talking I had to change the word friend to your who, the people who matter most. And so, so there's a, there's, there's a code of ethics with friends. We're actually friends. A friend, you can't say you're my who if you don't come over to my house for a barbecue and you know my wife's name. 
I mean, this yeah. is crazy. And so what people do is they've now tried to take even the power of who and use it as a schmoozing technique. Like as yeah. if all of a sudden I can now call you and you're going to do something. No, no, no. You have to do it and change it. So I play this game. It's a fantastic game. When I go around the country here, I have you. And so the people are listening. I ask you and I say, so who's your best friend? And then you mention a person's name. And then you mention it. I say, who's, and does, does he live in your town? Most people here, they don't even live in their town, their best friend, yeah. somewhere else. And I say, well, how would you have, you need a friend in town? And so if you want friends, of course, you got to be one, right? And so there is this code of ethics that you would do. And so the first thing that we would do is I say to them, let's see if we can send out a text message to our friends today. And what we're going to say in our text message to our friends, and we're going to send it to our friends, okay, to our, to our best friend, maybe to our brother or mom and dad, to our mate or our wife or, or husband, okay? And we're going to say this, hey, I was just thinking about you. I wanted to tell you how much I appreciate your friendship. I love you. Now, as soon as I start put the screen up and I say this, all these people start laughing in the audience. They're going to say, hey, are you drunk? Are you, you know, is there some problem? Are you <laughs> something wrong? And I said, you said these were your best friends. And so yeah. 180 words in the Greek language for love. We have one. So, so listen, I'm not telling my buddy who's my best friend, I love him like I love my wife. But the answer is you wouldn't, you and I wouldn't say I love you if you're in this. Listen, so now there's not one client of mine at the NBA and Major League Baseball and the NFL or any of my things that I, when I do business with you, that we're not at the end of this time of working together, getting to know each other and trust each other, that you're not going to tell me, hey, I love you. Now, and the reason it does it is we've excelled. This is where God transcends things and moves it up to a level now that all of a sudden, hey, this is about something that we're going to do together and we're going to be friends and I'm going to, I'm going to help you. You're going to help me. And this is, this is not a Madoff strategy like a, some Ponzi scheme. This isn't something that I'm using someone. No, no, no. If you and I are friends and I'm doing something for you, I'd never let you down. I would work harder for my friends, but I don't think friends should do friends deals like as if I'm going to charge, you need to do this as a discount for me. I want you to make as much money as you can possibly make. Why? God owns all the money. Yeah. He, there's, he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. God is not poor. He has no problem with this. He can give you one thought one idea and one friend to change the entire trajectory of your life. And so if you have one friend at your company, you are 40% more productive. Now you can't even at your company be more productive. And so I can increase your productivity in a small firm just by teaching friendship. You're not going to be sick. You're going to be more involved in ideas. You're going to be more friendly. You're going to be more positive. And the answer is that's what we need to be doing. We need to be lifting up each other. I need to look at you and find what you do good. I, uh, you know, I teach people all the time. I just don't believe in constructive criticism because everybody who sees it at the end, they're just waiting. Here's, I want to tell you five things about you're really good. And you're waiting for the hammer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because we, we've been taught, you know, you, yeah. you, say, you say how great they are. You slam them and then you back it up again. Right. Yeah. Listen, I'm not in competition with another church. I want the other church to do really well. God supplies this for me. We are led by the Holy Spirit. So this yes. subject that all of a sudden, like, I've got to kind of work or say something disparaging about other clients of mine. So I have to win at their expense. I'm not doing that. Listen, that is something that's so wrong. And as a result, God can't actually work in that. The answer is, hey, I want you to be joyful today. I want you to have a great day. I want you to come home and tell your kids what a great time it was at work. Yeah. And I'm using my gifts and my talents that God gave me. Bob, how do people take you? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what is, is I tell people all the time is that, so God so blessed me with, I so lucky to have such fantastic mom and dad. And so, so many people didn't have that. And my dad was one of these people who, who constantly tried to tell you and encourage you and lift you. He, he wouldn't, I mean, I, I tell a story one time in golf, my dad and I would always play golf. I grew up as a golfer and it was, I thought I'd be a pro for years. And, 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 and so, 
But if we played and, and I came to number 17 and 18 and I'm even par and I come to number 17, get a double bogey, then get to 18, double bogey. Now I'm coming off. Oh, now we're going to go to the 19th hole and we're going to sit and have a nice tea or something. And while we're sitting talking to you, my dad would go, you know, on hole number three, that was a really good shot you hit. And he says, I just, I hadn't seen anything like that. Number seven, wow, that putt that you made, you know, for birdie. And then number nine. And then all of a sudden, about the fourth time I hear this, I'm starting to think, hey, he's going to talk about the good stuff, isn't he? He's not going to talk about the last two holes. And that, you know, that's, I think, we need to be doing with people. The answer is, they already know that. They're hurt. We live in a very painful, messy, tragic life. And, and we need to encourage people. And we are, we are an encouragedless society, Wesley. We're, we don't have encouragers. And I'm telling you, we need people who come into their office every single day and go, this is going to be a great day. We are going to do some extra business today. <laughs> and then everyone starts to expect it, their attitude. You know, I tell people all the time that people carry with them a personal environment, and it's invisibly transmitted to everybody in the room. And so they can feel it. And if you are bringing the love, if you're bringing it, dang it, when I go out and give some talks, I tell people that they should be connecting, they should be serving and loving. And I say, hey, what's your title? And they would say, I'm the head of operation. I go, no, you're not. And then they, the person would say, hey, I'm the, head of, I'm the head of finance. Nope, no, 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 you're not. And then they say, hey, you're the head of this. And then I go, no, you're not the head of production. What are you? And I say, you are the director of love. Yeah. <laughs> <Leave it alone. laughs> and I get people trying to give me the old Barry White song. Whoa, I'm the director. <laughs> and then everybody starts to get the feeling, right? We get some start, some juice. And it's 8 a.m. or something where you are, or 8.15 or something. The answer is, yes. you start out your day, we got to find the source of the juice. Yes, yes. That's the yes. key. Amen. Okay, well, let's get into two chairs. Ah. So, let's... So, You've talked about your dad. Now let's talk about your mum because your mum was the one that that uh, taught you this the power of two chairs. So let's yeah. get into it. So the my dad, I, I want to yeah. tell you something. My dad was a Menza, so that's like the highest IQ, and he was a McKinsey guy, and he was a Notre Dame graduate, and he was really good, and he was my go-to guy that would give me great advice. And I've in my job, I have interviewed presidents of the United States and generals and titans of industry and studio heads and hall of fame coaches and the greatest advice i have ever gotten never came from any of them it came from my mom yes. <laughs> moms those are people. these people moms they love you they hug you they cradle you they know what you're doing they they know how to understand the spiritual side of someone's heart they can feel if it's broken right and so i went to my mom when i was like graduating from college, I said, mom, how am I going to find my, you know, my dream? How am I going to, how am I going to face, you know, the fact that I got to figure out how to pick a wife? Uh, you know, what, what do I do in times of trouble? And my mom looked at me and she said, oh, those are good questions. Of course, I don't have the answers, but I know who does. And she says, so listen, she says, I'm going to tell you a secret that was passed on to me, a secret that changes everything. And when people listen to this, I'm going to teach them something that's so overwhelming. If I could teach you anything, this subject of what I'm about to do changes the entire life you have. It'll change your wife, your kids, your husband. It'll change everything in your business. It'll change your success. It changes things. And why? Because we're talking about something supernatural something so amazing, so unbelievable. And I'm a businessman. Now listen, I, I was wondering where were the pastors writing this book? I mean, dang, I mean, where was somebody? Yeah. I mean, I, I can't even write a memo. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so when I, I started it, so my mom said to me, I'm gonna, before you ask, I gotta ask you the subject, right? And so she, she was asking me questions, specifically some questions about my faith. My question, and so she said, so do you think, she said, I'm going to ask you the first one. Are you ready? And I said, sure. Do you think God knows your situation? I said, so I kind of like what? And so she, well, does he know that, you, that you're that you looking for a maid and that you have dreams and you have goals? Do you think he knows that? Yes, I do. And she goes, good. She says, you know, it's interesting. Most people, she was replying to me that 
they see God like an old time phone operator. Remember they used to have the plugs and they put it yeah. in doing this and they're ring, ring, and it's like a, God could only talk to six people and there's 7 billion people in the world. Right. And so dang, if it wasn't ISIS, heart attacks and natural disaster, I can't get to you. And yes. so, <laughs> it's sorry. And so, so she then said, listen, the highest priority in a time of crisis. Now, listen, everyone we're talking to on today's webinar who will listen in the next weeks, no matter where they are, is either in trouble, will be in trouble, their family's in trouble, their kids are in trouble, their friends are in trouble, someone's in trouble. And the answer is, they got to have a way to talk to people and say, how are you? And let me ask you three questions. The first one is, do you think God knows? That's really not threatening. Because the question is, hey, do you think he knows? They're either going to say yes or no. And so the second question said, is this too hard for him? And I said, you know, I, I, I said, of course not. And she goes, well, it's too hard for you. And I go, you're right. And she goes, do you think God has a good plan for you? And I said, I think he does. And she goes, what is it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and she goes, exactly, two chairs. What if there's a 1% chance that God himself, the creator of the universe, would meet you at your apartment, at your house tomorrow morning? Everyone has chairs. It doesn't matter if they're lawn chairs, they're bean bags, they're whatever it is, but everyone's got chairs. What if he would come down and meet you in your house and talk to you. If there's a 1% chance that he'd meet you tomorrow, would you go? You know, I've never had, Wesley, anybody tell me no. No, they want to meet. And the answer is, and I say to him, well, where have you been? Because there's 100% chance he's going to meet you. Now, I've, so when I was writing this book, I was halfway through it. God said, hey, I'd like you to stop for a second. And he said, now listen, you're going to be on a call, on a webinar, on things. And someone's going to say to you, hey, do you, listen, do you believe that he's going to talk to me? And he says, because if your answer is you don't think I am, then we need to stop. And I said, I'm 100% all in. And so I have people all over the world sending me pictures of their two chairs. Yes. They're telling me of their conversations. It's the wildest thing that I get five, six, seven letters a day all over the world. And I know that I wonder how they even found me. <laughs> and so it's so great. So when I started this subject of two chairs, we're talking about something that's so obvious, like, why would God, I mean, people have to really ask it. The difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is good questions. And so the questions that I, that I, that I have here right off is, why would God say renew your mind daily if he only meant you to do it on Sundays and Easter? Yes. Come on. Why would he say ask, seek, and knock? Now, if I ask you a question, you're going to respond to me. So God's not going to do that? So he's not, he just was teasing us. He's going to be up there and, you know, when we head the pearly gates, he's going to be low five and Peter and Paul, like as if he punked us. Come on, this is crazy. Why would he say, let those who have ears to hear, hear? Well, because he wants to talk. Why would he say, be still and know that I'm God? So there's so many quotes. I love the quote in Proverbs 123 that says, if you would have heard my rebuke, what? that I wanted to talk. I would have shared with you all my thoughts and all my counsel. Now listen, I don't care who's the president of our countries. And if we could sit with them today, that would be pretty amazing. And the access, if we were their son, that would be pretty good. But here's the thing, who are they? We're talking about God who's gonna to come to your house. He did you. He calls you his friend. He's not mad at you. He's not mad he made you. He's not disappointed. He's got a plan. It's good. It's prosperous at a future and it has a hope and it's going to change everything the day you show up and you keep showing up. Why? Because, hey, it's, the, it's an 80-20 rule. You get to talk for one minute. I mean, that's what we do with God today. I mean, this is the craziest thing. We go and we do a thing with God called talking where we inform him. We just talk, 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 talk. And then we bring it up over and over and over. And then we debrief him later like he's a slacker. You know, <laughs> we treat him kind of like a flag. We love him. We're in pew thinking, pew three, C2. We're listening to a monologue instead of a dialogue. Listen, the pastors in the, in the country, they love this. Why? Because you're going to engage in talking to God before you actually got to church. Yes. You're yes. actually going to help other people. That would be a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be on our like iPhones, okay, acting like we're looking at the Bible.
This is just so obvious and so simple. God wants to talk to us. He's been waiting a long time. There's 75% of the Christians maybe who believe like we do, and then less than 1% are actually doing two chairs. What? Listen, this is so big, Wesley. Now, we have quiet time, but this is so big. The God, you know, so listen, Jesus paid a huge price so we could open a door, so we could sit and sup, have yeah. dinner with the King of Kings, the triune God. And he's got some things to tell us, and it's crucial. Yeah. Well, <laughs> 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 but I'm, I'm a bit lost for words because you know because you are so right if people really grasp this it would change our world and, and um, hence why there's so much opposition I guess to getting the message out about it because someone knows that and we well, also, and when you really think about it is when you're sitting with someone, um, it's just as the same way you're bringing your transmitting of what you are and where you are. Before you went to work, if like in the morning here, you gab your coffee. People ask me all the time, and they say, listen, do you talk out loud? Of course, I'm gonna talk just like I talk to you. I say, good morning. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'm a mess. I got issues today. And he goes, yeah, I know. Yeah, no, and, uh, it, and he says, listen, I put on some praise music. I do some things. It's so fantastic. And so one of the things is this. We should be having a Moses effect at the burning yeah. bush with him in the morning. Yeah. Our yeah. Faith, we don't have, listen to me. Here's what it says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Lean not to your own understanding. Why? Because what I'm about to say to you is so crazy. It's so unbelievable. If you would just acknowledge me with all, everything, everything you got, if you would acknowledge me, Okay, I'll direct your path. Seriously, the guy who created the world is going to direct your path? I don't know. I'm done. This is really good. Yes. He's showing me. And listen, there's no path that he has that's not fantastic. And so the issue would be he tells you, he'll whisper to you, turn left, turn right, don't go there. No, no, you know, wrong. That's, this is good. Okay. Hey, I love you. You'll know it. This is so spectacular when you're with God. You're going to have, it's going to be something that I leap out of bed. I've been having the same meeting with God every day for this mentoring advice and daily guidance. And listen, I'm a CEO. I got tons of issues and problems. I got three daughters. Holy cow. Can you imagine? <laughs> it's like an overwhelming. <laughs> Everyone, there's so many hormones. I mean, come on. <laughs> We all know this is impossible. And then there's always trouble. And they wouldn't like give me in my business like a good search. They gotta have some search where something went terrible, you know? And so, but that, you know what God says? Hey, is this your, you know, I tell people, it's funny is I'm a red, I can look at your resume as an executive recruiter. I've done this for 37 years. This is our 50th year. And I can look at your resume and I can tell whether you, how, how good you're gonna be in a job just based on looking at your resume. <clears throat> I've seen God's resume. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> he never loses. <laughs> he like opens up the sea. People have no idea. It's, he'll open up doors that you can't even imagine. He can say one thing. He can get one friend to do it. When they realize the portal that we're talking about, the back in the day of the Old Testament, that all of a sudden they turn a corner, they were doing all this for God, they turn a corner and they're like 60 yards, 60 you know, miles down the road. How would that be possible today? Are you kidding me? Of course it's possible, why? Because if I an executive recruiting say you're great, you know what you are? Great. And people have trusted me and they're paying me a large amount of money to what? Tell them who is great. And if I say you're great, you just went 60 miles ahead. I can move you, elevate you. And that's the way God is. He just, he, you can't elevate yourself. People, other people elevate you. And God whispers to him, Wesley, let's move on him. And all of a sudden, you know, it's really, really good. It's just fantastic. And of course, you know, you can't get, you know, people are trying to get position, power, and money to get peace, happiness, and contentment. Of course, if financial security equal peace of mind, then the richest people would be the most peaceful. And are they? Oops. No. And then happiness, well, they relate it to things. And of course, once you and I have one nice thing, what do we want? Another. 
yeah. contentment or never content. We are talking about, as you told me when we before we got online today, as you said to me this morning, the peace of God that passes yes. all understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Just being in the room. And you know yeah. what? I tell you in success in business is that when you look peaceful, when you look confident, when you know who you are and whose you are and the path you're called, everything has changed. It's just crazy good. So that's my just opener here to the two chairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Bob, let, let's it, let's ask a very real question because I know some of the people online, and you know, it, some of them are close to bankruptcy. That's you know, I know someone who's going to be listening to this later on today. He, he's in the throes of making a decision whether to go bankrupt or not. Right. Um, there is, you know, there, I, I guess one of the things that, that I've noticed with 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 kingdom business people is when they're listening to God, what they get from him affects their bottom line. <laughs> and it could be, it can be good or bad. You know, like, you know, sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's been a bit hit and miss. Sometimes I think, you know, and then there's a whole, but God told me to do this. How, how do you respond to someone in that situation? Because this is, this is real. This is nitty gritty. And no doubt you face situations where there's no money, uh, to pay the bills coming in. You, you've been trying different strategies. You've been thinking that this is God. You've been going out, but it just, it's like there's a brick wall there. What, do you, what, what would you say? So first thing I'd say is that, um, so God created this amazing thing called friends. They're called personal board of directors. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and on this is that the people who are going through bankruptcy and going through things, first off, God knows. And, and so they're not talking to him about that. So what happens in times of trouble is we hide. So we get isolated. There's 29 million people in the United States that are out of a job and they won't tell their friends they're out of a job. 80% of the country are not using their number one talent in their jobs because they just jumped into jobs their moms and dads told them to do. They got into a job. They got into this business. They don't know a ton about business. It's not really what they love. And you can't be successful at what you like. You got to love it. So you've got to surround yourself and pastors who don't have accountability or, or people who are CEOs who aren't listening to their board. And so even if you had a board that's your company board, you need a personal board on, on your side. And in the power of who I teach you exactly how you're going to do that, who you're going to have, you know, on your board, you got to have your mate on your board. Most people don't even tell their mate about anything that's going on because they're like scared to tell them big mistake. The answer is that God knows he's got a plan. But the answer is, is that we're living above our means sometimes, we're above our expenses, we're doing some things, and we got not a touch with our best strengths and, our, and what we really do well. So the guy who's all of a sudden the head of sales moves up, he's like the lead now, he no longer does any sales, he never hired any really good salespeople, and all of a sudden he does this, he has a CFO over here who all of a sudden have bought a bunch of stuff and he just allowed it to occur because he didn't do this. There's a thousand problems, but wouldn't it be amazing? Yeah. God gave you some people who could help you, but you'd have to risk telling them about your problem and see all over the country. You know, I don't want to tell you that I got a problem with my daughter or I have a problem with, you know, I don't have a problem with my marriage and I have a problem over here with, with this account. This guy hates me. And so I'm telling him I don't like it. The answer is, listen, everybody, there is no problem. That's first, not common to man. Second is, God knows, and he has to tell you if you'd ask him. He said he'd tell you. So the question is, I don't know, you're going to have to try it, and you have to show up. You'd have to try talking to a friend. Now, most people, they say, oh, I had a friend. I had a friend. No, you didn't. That wasn't a friend. That, was, you, you're not, that guy's not coming over to your house for barbecue or having a cigar. You're not talking to this guy. <laughs> you know, this is ridiculous. The answer is you're talking about someone that you really don't totally want to tell all the stuff to. Then there's some people who then go into this zone is, oh, God told me. Listen, if it's in line with the, in line with the word. Now, listen, God's got things. God's very distinct on something that you're not going to overspend. You're not going to do some things. He's going to tell you and he's going to counsel it with his word, with people in your life who are, who are your mentors and your advisors. And you have to be accountable to someone. 
So the answer is, hey, the world doesn't revolve around Bob. And number two is Bob's not the smartest person in the room. I make sure of that. I want to hear about other people's advice. And the answer is, if I hear a bunch of people tell me, hey, we're in trouble, you didn't hear about the bankruptcy last week. It's been happening for a while. As soon as it happened, I'm talking to my accountant. I'm talking to all of a sudden, I'm looking at all my expenses. I'm trying to get it. Now, I just had a guy the other day and it just hit him. And of course, he didn't do any of that. And I'm talking to a big guy and he did it. And I said, now listen, you might have to go bankrupt. But isn't it great that you know the guy who created the universe? Isn't it great that you could actually talk to him? What if there's another job that actually he wanted you to do that's more in line with what you do? Wouldn't this be fantastic that it used like, all your gifts and talents? But you got to use your things. I had, a, I had a guy in my group who came to one of my conferences. He got my book. He, I signed it for him. All of a sudden, he had trouble with his marriage, trouble and everything. And all of a sudden, six months later, he's homeless. He's like sitting out in the middle of the thing. Everything. He's been beaten up by people. Things are going wrong. Everything the other. And then all of a sudden, he's only got this small little bag of stuff. And guess what he's got in his bag? The power of who? <laughs> Dang, if he doesn't read the book, all of a sudden it reminds him who is who is. And he calls his brother and says, I'm in trouble. And he's been, where have you been? The guy's a big business guy today, very successful, married, like totally changed around what? Started out with this thought that God, when I wrote Power of Who, God's the who. Jesus is like the who of who's here. He's already got a plan for you. And the answer is, is that we're messing up the easy. We're making this much too complex. The biggest problem that initially the Jews The whole Old Testament was acknowledge God. The whole time they didn't acknowledge Him, and then we got to the New Testament. Hang on, guys. I think we've just uh, Bob has just dropped out. Let's uh, see if we can get him back. Yeah. Hey, I think I think you're coming back. There on I think the enemy did not want us to talk about that. No, I get that impression. Do you want to give it another go? Because yeah. because I could, you know, this is the. So, so the whole Old Testament, if you look at the whole Bible, the Bible is about this thick and three quarters of the Old Testament who never acknowledged God. That's what he wants. Then we had the New Testament. We didn't acknowledge the Son. We crucified him. Then we went and got the most despicable person in the world, Paul, who was Saul. And he tells us that this crucifixion thing was really good. And guess what you get to do again? Acknowledge him. We're back at the two chairs. Yes. So can you imagine? Seriously, the most amazing thing in the, in the Bible is this. So <clears throat> this is what our faith says. And so I'm not saying something that everybody doesn't know and hasn't got. And that is that you died, Christ lives in you, right? And you are now seated in heavenly places. That's what it says. Seated, S-E-A-T-E-D. Two chairs in heaven. That's where you are. It's fascinating. Then they looked at the disciples and said, so how do we pray? Good question. Our Father. Can you imagine sitting in two chairs with God and calling him your father? You're the son of the king. This identity exchange is so fantastic that a woman is the daughter of the king. You're the son. It's so fantastic. So now our father who art in heaven. Yeah, right. Where we are, two chairs. Okay. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. We're taking the two chairs and bringing it into your house. And the answer is, this is what we were meant to do. We were meant to be to be with God and, and friends and him telling us strategies and battle plans for the day. That's the goal. It's he's got some things to say. And listen, your friends who are all in trouble, the answer is, yeah, I know, but you've got to cast your care onto him who cares for you. 
And then you get to see, and you got to leave it with him. And that's going to take some faith. I got people who say to me, you know, Bob, I don't know if I believe in that faith thing. And I said, have you ever been in a cab in New York? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been on an airplane? I mean, you check the lug nuts. No, you're putting faith in something every day. I'm telling you that this is, this is trustworthy. And you're going to have to, you know, in times of trouble, I'm talking to your guy who's bankrupt right now. I'm telling you that this is an epic story at hand. This is the time that God gets to show up and show off on your behalf. Now, listen, there's some things you got to do. You got to read because I got, and we're going to talk about that. Well, there's seven steps I need you to take in times of trouble. In this world, you're going to have trouble. How much? Lots. <laughs> <laughs> and none of us, none, zero, all of us are going to face it. Why? It strengthens us. All our times in our past, you can look back in your past and say, hey, what was the greatest thing that ever happened to you? Well, that trouble back then, except I just don't want any more. <laughs> you know, uh, you can li- give some of that to Wesley. <laughs> Don't give me any more trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, this is a really good story, and the answer is lives all throughout the Bible. The whole Bible is filled with people who were in possible situations. Yes, yeah. He wasn't going good, and he knew, yeah. and God still loved us, and he still had a plan, yeah. but we couldn't hear him. Why? Because we were still always thinking about the trouble. Yeah. God said you have to make an exchange, and I tell people all the time, how do you start your day? Do you like get up and drink a bunch of coffee? Do you get in the newspaper and start looking for murders and, you know, are you, uh, are you making runs? What are you doing? I get up every morning and, and, and stand and sit down with the King of Kings and I'm totally disheveled. I don't know what I'm doing. I got trouble. And then I pass all of my cares over to him. And he then reminds me of some that I didn't give him. He goes, I want that. And I go, what? He goes, come on, you know, (laughs) and he goes, you're going to have to give that to me. And then, when I do, he says, I'm going to give you something. What? Peace, joy, insight, wisdom. On what? The bankruptcies, the stuff, the relational problems. Listen, when you know you're with God, he's saying, I love you. He's affirming you. He's saying, I got this. I know that. Now, listen, I don't want you doing that anymore. I don't want you around these people anymore. I want you to do this now. I got some plans for you. Are you going, now listen, how will I know at the end of the day whether you trust me? God says that to me all the time. You know how you're gonna know? And God says, you're gonna be cheerful today because in this world, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. The only way we can be a light to anyone else is that they know you're in trouble and yet you're somehow boldly exclaiming that God's gonna do something great here. And the answer is, I'm with him no matter what. Whether it's up, down, sideways, this. The answer is, I'm waiting for the king of kings to show up. And the answer is, the longer it does, if you're really being hammered over and over and over again, the devil is overplaying his hand. That should be like the greatest thing that ever happened. And so most people, they're not thinking that. They're just going, woes me. They start speaking it, and they're talking about their trouble. Stop talking about it. God said, if you gave it to him, do you have faith? And so you don't need a lot of faith. It's a measure, a little teeny measure of faith. And so... If you do that, he will honor it. And then, you know, you got to test this. You know, you got to test God. You got to taste it to see how good it is. And I think this is an issue for people is today they've never really known how good God is. And he is good. And he's got some plans. And so once we do it, we'll move into, you really can move all of a sudden because the world and the situation, I'm not going to tell you I'm a Mr. Positive thinker for this world because this world, it's going to beat you down. But over here, well, we're not of this world. We're sons of the king. God's running to us. And he is giving you strength and wisdom. And he gave you the mind of Christ. So you're thinking things. He gave you a new heart. He gave you a new mind. And you can think things. And all he has to do is kind of go, beep, one thought. And you go, oh, that's a good thought. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like rocking. Listen yes. to me. We're one thought away from something so great, and that's the way it is. I've interviewed the greatest people in history, and you know what? They have three things in common. One, they believe they have an assignment and a purpose and a destiny all their own. Do you believe you have that? Yes. 
Yes. And so then number two is that someone crossed their path. And this might be the first one today for someone who's listening, that just you and me, what we are doing is telling them that they can do that dream, that, is, that God's going to do it. God's not into probabilities. He is, he's a possibility thinker. He's telling you that all things are possible with him. And so as soon as you turn, as soon as someone, you, someone says, I believe in you, they turn, and then their friends turn towards them. And now all of a sudden we're doing things. And the way you activate it is two chairs. And that's the key. Yeah. And I'd say, listen, it's so crazy. It's so big because a lot of people never had really good dads and they never got the father's blessing. Yes. And so if you hadn't gotten that today, I'm telling you, is this. So Jesus walked for 30 years of his life and no one knew who he was. And then he kind of turned the corner. There's John the Baptist who says, there's Jesus. There he is. And he came over to me. He said, hey, look, you need to baptize me. And he goes, no, no, you need to baptize me. You know, he said, no, you need to do it for us. And what happens is they baptize Jesus. And when he comes out, God himself says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And then the moment he heard that and it was exclaimed immediately, Jesus walked into his calling. And I'm telling you is that there are some people out there, if your dads are alive and they haven't done and haven't told you they love you, and you say, I know that their dad didn't tell them they love him, the dad before them didn't tell them to love him. You know, if I'm in a conference, 70% of that. But here's what I'll say. Get your dad to put his hand like this. You just grab your hand and put it on and say, Dad, you need to do this for me. You need to do this for me. Tell me you love me. Tell me that you're proud of me and give me the Father's blessing. Everything changes that moment. Well, Bob, this is just beyond belief. <laughs> We're starting to run out of time, but talk about the seven things. <laughs> Let me tell you real quick. So first, you got to get to your two chairs. Now, I don't care how you do it. You got to run to them. You got to set them up tonight, lay your hands on them, tell God tonight that you're going to meet him in the morning. Number two is, is that you got, you get, God gave you specific people to help you. And in your life, God's going to do this, but he gave you then people that tie not only with his advice, but he's going to do this in this process that he's got some thoughts. And so I want you to talk to God at two chairs. I don't need you to do a devotional, even though they're fantastic. I, I always looked at Oswald Chambers or some great person, you know, doing something and I'm vicariously living through them talking to God. I'd like to do that myself. This would be a good thing. And so the answer is God will talk to each and every person. Then you got some friends. Number three, you have to get to higher ground off the bankruptcy. You got to get up so you can see the field. Here's the field. God's bigger than all of this. That sometimes this bankruptcy isn't about you. It's about your son who needs you to be at home. And you've been doing this company and you were never called to do the company. Okay. Four is, is this. Listen, in a process, you're going to have to make some change. You know, Zig Ziglar always said is, what change could I do? You know, could I do a change that would make my life worse in life. Everyone raise their hand. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Is there one that could make you better? And everyone goes, mm, I don't know. I got one, two chairs. Change is the thing. It's small little changes. All I need you to do is set up two chairs, little teeny chairs. And then number five is don't think like when you come to two chairs that your mind isn't going to race and you're going to hear the enemy talk. Isn't it funny that we can listen all the time to this voice that's going on and on and on and on and telling us we're not good, we're going to go bankrupt, everything's not going to be good. We can do that like it's normal. But then when we're saying we're going to talk to God, that's awkward. So we're waiting for Morgan Freeman or, or George Burns to fly in the room. I mean, it's, kind of, <laughs> it's crazy. And so then, order, listen, order yourself eyes forward in life. Don't look backwards. You know, we spend so much time. God gave a rear view mirror a little. He gave you a big windshield so you could look forward. Listen, you got with God and he forgives you. He forgets. It's as far as the east is from the west. You got a problem? Say to God, I'm sorry. Move on. If you, if you got a problem with your wife, try this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then do the done. This is the greatest thing in the book. Listen. God's on the other side of your problem. He's already over there. It's already done. And so the answer is he's confused why he already has given you this. It's already done. If I told you that you were, it's funny, and I tell people about vacation. You go on vacation starting next week. Well, the rest of this week in this job you think is terrible, you're all of a sudden having a great time. Yes. How's that possible? Well, the same way with God. I'm telling you that God's got a great future. The, one of my favorite quotes is, is, is this from G.K. Chesterton. And he said this, that the one thing in life 
that gives radiance above other things, that there's something great just around the corner. Are you looking for it? Now listen, you gotta keep your eyes on Jesus. You gotta keep your eyes off the problems. I'm telling you that there's a blessing in two chairs that God himself, no one else. People say to me all the time, what's he gonna say to me? Listen, I don't get to go. There's not three chairs. It's just you and God. <laughs> this is so great. You can tell him all the stuff. He knows it, but he loves you. And it's gonna be life changing for people. I'm just telling you, no matter what, whether you read the book or not, you got chairs, get to your chair, say yeah. good morning, say good morning, okay, and, and get to them. Oh, I just want to make sure that if anyone's got any questions, they can put them up. I think they're all just overwhelmed like a Bob. I am so, so grateful for what you're sharing today because I, yeah, uh, I think this is something I listen to again and again and again and again and again till it sinks in. Um, oh. What else would you like to say? <laughs> I'll tell you this. I'll tell you, I had a guy in my office the other day and he said to me, I said to him, he's really in trouble. And I said, does God know your situation? He says, you know, Bob, I don't know if I believe in God. And I said, I said, with all the trouble you got? And he goes, yeah. And I, and I go, so how's that working for you? And he goes, yeah, it's not working good. And I said, so do you, think, do you think this is too hard for him to handle? I don't know. Do you think God has a plan for you? I don't know. If there's a 1% chance that God would meet you tomorrow, would you go? He said, yes, I would. At 11.59 that night, he sent me a picture of his two chairs. And the next morning, he called me at 10. He said, I turned the corner and I felt God. I felt him. I knew it. He said it was unbelievable. I didn't know what to say. I've never felt God. I didn't know it was possible. And I said, what happened? He said, he told me I'm, I'm so happy you're here. I'm just so happy. I said, what did you do? He said, I hit my knees. I just said, I'm sorry. And, and then he picked me up to my chair. And he picked me up and he said, I'll never miss another two chairs with God. He says, I just want to thank you. He says, he said, this is the biggest thing that's happened in my life. And, and so I want to tell you that I could not express the enormity of two chairs. All my search work, all my job, all my stuff is meaningless. All my, all my success, all my things that I do is nothing compared to sitting with the King of Kings. I give it all up. I give every of that up. And I'm going to tell you, the moment you start talking to God yourself, you're, you're, the Bible becomes an audible book. <laughs> All of a sudden, you understand who it is you love. You feel it's personal. What, that, what possibly could be a personal relationship with Christ? And we don't actually talk. He talks to me. I talk to him. I mean, every other personal relationship we do. And so God always meant it that way. He did. And so uh, I'm, I just put a blessing on every single person here today who's listening in Australia. I'm so honored that I can talk. I can't even tell you how fantastic it is that I could write a book in Dallas, Texas, and it could be that I could be with you, Wesley, here in Australia talking about God, the triune God. I mean, this is so good. And I'm telling you, the blessing I have that I give, I give, it's, it's better than gold and silver. It's better than that. It's, a, it's all it is, is that God himself is going to bless you. He's going to take over. He's going to show you things. And if you would just lean on him, just lean into him, draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. And everything will change. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bob, <laughs> I'm just in tears. <laughs> um, it is so simple and yet so powerful. And, and I think a lot of times we complicate things so much. And um, it's, uh, yeah, I had a, <laughs> I, I do some work, <coughs> I do some work with the homeless and, and yesterday I was meeting with this lady and 
uh, I just said, you know what? You remind me of this lady called Ruth in the Bible that you were positioning yourself. And I said, look, you know, I know you're not religious and because it's a government position, I can't, you know, share the faith. But I want to tell you about this lady. And, and, and I went through the story of Ruth and, you know, the fact that, you know, you know, what if Rahab, the prostitute, hadn't done what she did? And what if she hadn't trained Boaz, you know, to be someone who would accept someone who was a Moabitess, who was someone who was so despised and rejected by Israel? But yet God set this up and then they become the very lineage of Jesus, you know, and this, this lady, is, as she was, um, <laughs> it's, it's amazing, she, um, when she met her first husband, he was a factory worker. And by the time their marriage ended, he's, he's in Khan, you know, doing all these documentaries and things around the world. And, 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 and uh, I said to her, you know what? You're a woman who's going to make men great. And she, and she told me this story about how she took her husband and, and caused him, you know, to go up. And, and I just thought, you know, God has the answer to no matter whether you're a Christian, non-Christian, whoever you are, he still has the answer to the situations that you're facing today. He knows. But we are so, he knows. And like the comment for one of the interviews, I watched him preparing for this, you know, when we, when we talk about erectile dysfunction, <laughs> then we talk about hearing with God. And I'm thinking, oh, that's so true. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We have made something normal awkward. Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. So, so the answer is, is that everywhere we go, I mean, it should be that we should be talking about God so simple. I mean, it's not religious, it's relational. Yeah. This is the God of all. He knows it all. He's drawing all into him. He's giving everyone an opportunity. It doesn't matter what you did, how he did it, how he did this. He's going to meet you right where you are. You don't have to come and get different dress. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. The answer is, he just said, hey, listen to me. Listen, be still. I got you. I got your back. I just got you. And, you know, and, the, and, the, and the moment you're in his presence, isn't this what two chairs about? Once you're in the presence of God, every knee shall fall. <laughs> They're all going to bow. They're all going to do it, no matter what. I've, I've never heard anybody not, and the answer is at some point, and, and listen, if you're on a gurney heading to the hospital, you're not thinking about your prescription plan and your rehab program. <laughs> you're screaming out, God, help me, please. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why they, hey, and listen, God will meet you there. Yeah. He'll meet you at your last moment. Why wouldn't we want a little earlier where we can have some success? Yeah. You know, and that's what your whole, this webinar, listen, what could be more successful, okay, than to be sitting with the guy who created all the world, all the knowledge, all the ideas, yes. you know, all the stars, everything. I mean, dang it. It's just unbelievable. And, and, we're, and we're bypassing them every day to get to work earlier. We're busy. I tell, listen, I tell people this. So time is everyone's enemy, but timing's your best friend. It's a paradox. So listen, you got time. Come on, you can, timing. I just want to spend a few minutes with God first. You get a minute to talk, he gets four. You get two minutes to talk, he gets eight. And the answer is, listen, it'll be overwhelming to you. It's a big win. Yeah. It's a big win for you. And everyone knows it. You and I both know it. And I'm, and I'm just telling you, if, if anybody can hear the confidence in my voice, I'm telling you with great confidence, that he's gonna, he's no respecter of person. He's not gonna help Wesley and Bob and not help you. Yeah. He can't help Billy Graham and some president somewhere. The answer is he's gonna help you. He digs you. He's gonna leave the the hundred to get to the one. Yeah. Bob, we're out of time, but can you pray for us? Yeah. <laughs> just to seal this in yeah. people's lives today. Yeah. So Lord, I just pray that every word I said, everything that that Wesley said today. Okay, that no, no word of God will come back void. Okay, it will accomplish that which it was sent. And this was sent specifically to encourage you, to remind you, okay, that God loves you. He'd like to talk to you. 
He's got a plan. He's not mad at you. He's going to all of a sudden turn the situation around and that you need to run to him. Don't delay. Drop what you're doing and get to your two chairs. And then don't quit. Keep going. Don't expect, don't think that the enemy's not going to try to stop this and try to get you to think of 57,000 other things while you're talking. But listen, put on some quiet music. Listen, praise, tell them thank you. God will meet you, I promise. And they will have an experience with you. You'll feel it. Set up the room. Pray up the room the night before. Pray all the strife that's been in your house to leave. Any of the problems that you did, tell them you ain't holding those no more. And ask God himself to come and meet you, and I promise you he will. And so, Lord, the two of us, you said if two people agree, so all we need is Wesley and me for your whole audience. That's it. The power's there. And you and I agree that this is going to be accomplished, that great things are going to come. Kids are going to be doing two chairs. Grandmas are going to be doing two chairs. Grandpas are going to be doing two chairs everyone all over and it's going to spread like wildfire all throughout Australia, all throughout the world. And we pray that in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Bless you so much, Bob. I just, I, I just honor you so much for being faithful to the call of God on your life so that we can enter into the call that God has on our lives. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I 